Hello everyone. Uh, today I wanted to do a brief video about the latest book I read that I just finished. And let me pull up the cover here. Um, it is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. I hope you're being able to see that. Kind of got a glare going on there. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, loved it. Um, and yeah, I'm in, not in my usual um, place today. I'm actually uh, visiting my sister in Arkansas. So this desk that I'm doing this video at, by uh, wonderful coincidence, actually has this little scripture. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And it's got this roadway, this journey. Uh, so it's pretty appropriate um, I think for for this book. Um, so I chose this book. Um, I have read several of Murakami's uh, books. Well, not very many. I've read uh, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. I've read Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World twice. And I've read IQ 84. And so this one, I, you know, I saw um, mentioned frequently it's you know one of his more popular books i it's my understanding and so it had been on sort of on my list to read for a while and so i decided um recently to um it was time to for another murakami book so i decided to to go with this one this one's from i think 2002 at least in english um I'm not sure I think. Anyway, the early early 2000s it came out. So um, that's why I chose it and how I came to read it. Uh, I'm a big fan of his other books, so um, really uh, wanted to, to experience another one. So, um, you know, the uh, what the book is about, um, I think I, I think I, I marked here, I read this book electronically, that was an electronic uh, cover that I just showed you, and I think that there is this passage from the book that really describes the book really well, and it's just, it's not very long, so I'll just read it. There's another world that parallels our own, and to a certain degree you're able to step into that other world and come back safely, as long as you're careful. <laughs> but go past a certain point and you'll lose the path out. It's a labyrinth. And then it skips down uh, a couple of paragraphs more and it says, um, they're having this discussion. Things outside you are projections of what's inside you. And what's inside you is a projection of what's outside. So when you step into the labyrinth outside you, at the same time you're stepping into the labyrinth inside. It's most definitely a risky business. So that sort of describes this book really well because um, this book is basically the story of um, the this young 15-year-old uh, um, named Kafka, and he decides to leave home, leave his father. He lives with his father, and he's an unhappy, lonely boy, and he decides to leave home because he feels like he's under an Oedipal curse um, where, um, you know, he will kill his father, sleep with his mother, and kill and sleep with his sister. Um, and so he, he's trying to avoid this curse, and so he decides to leave home, and so he, he runs away from home. And um, so the, um, I think it's the odd number chapters uh, concern this storyline. He leaving, he eventually goes to um, a library where he, he works and meets a couple of the other main characters, the librarian there, Oshima, and then Miss Saiki, who who actually uh, owns the library. It's a private library that's open to the public. Um, so that's sort of his uh, the basis of his story. And then the other storyline is this older gentleman called Mr. Nakata, and he has um, he's sort of had early in life he's had this mysterious uh, occurrence that happened to him and it left him somewhat um it left him very mentally changed where he can no longer read and write and he is uh, just um sort of functions at the world on a very kind of um real level i mean he's he doesn't abstract things very much so just a real sort of like plain straightforward way but one thing he actually can do is um he um can talk to cats 
so he uh, has part-time work um, sometimes where people have learned of this skill. He do they don't know that he can talk to them, but they know that he has good luck in finding lost cats. And so he um, uses he does this uh, as a part-time job and plus he likes talking with cats so um, he ultimately is looking for this one particular cat that actually then sets him out on a on a journey um, and so his story is told um, then in the even chapters and one thing that I should one character that I didn't mention for Kafka um, is um, the boy named Crow so since um, Kafka is sort of his journey is sort of Oedipal, you know, an Oedipal, uh, based on sort of the Greek tragedy. Um, he has a chorus in the background, a person, a character who is sort of like a chorus who who narrates sort of from the background. And this is the boy named Crow. Um, he doesn't have a name, but it's a, it's sort of a maybe you could say it's another aspect of of Kafka himself, uh, another an inner voice or something like that, but sort of sort of gives him advice and um, comments sometimes on on the action. So that's sort of um, I think the outline of the book and the basic outline of the book without giving away spoilers. So you know my experience of the book, I I have yet to read a Murakami book that I don't just feel on a really deep, deep level, um, some connection to, and this book, um, really to me, it, it spoke of three main sort of things. One is fate and the role of fate in our lives. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm drawn to this idea of fate because I wonder often, you know, how much of life do we control and, how much do we not control? And so a lot of times I think we think we control more than we actually do. And sometimes, um, you know, it's just it's part of the human condition is actually deciding, coming to terms with what you can control and what you can't control. Because, you know, a lot depends on being able to determine um, that if you, uh, as far as to make decisions for yourself in your life. And um, this book deals with, with, with fate in a way. Um, those things that we are that we actually can't control those set of circumstances that put us on a path that then we can't turn from because too many previous decisions have already been made that have led us where we are and we just we continue on um, and, and can't turn turn around so the role of fate I think that's um, that's a central to me it was a central theme in this book and, and something that I pulled from it and then um, another um, Another, I think, another concept I think that I, I took really strongly from this book was the concept of time. So this is also true of really the other books of Murakami's that I've read, but time sort of loses its it has its its it loses its meaning in a way. It means everything, and then at the same time, it means it means nothing because it's the time. For example. Um, uh, passing and uh, it can be sort of interwoven with fate too that sort of as time passes then the fate you know it it intertwines within the path that you're on and you can't always go back then um, to to the beginning because the time has passed and so you can't necessarily re rework that um, because of time um, but I think, you know, one thing that I thought, uh, one concept that I thought um, that I really, really loved was this idea of that everyone always needs a place to return to. So wherever that is, um, you know, if it's home, if it's um, uh, a person or, or a, a spot, a, ge a piece of geography somewhere, uh, that's sort of a grounding that a person returns to, that everybody needs that. And I took that away from the book and I thought that was um, really beautiful. Um, and then the other uh, the, the other concept that, that I took away from it is uh, the concept of memory, and um, it the role that memory pay, plays in our lives. And um, you know, I got this really a lot from um, from Hardboiled Wonderland. Obviously, uh, if you've read that, I didn't do a video on any. This is the first Murakami book that I've actually done a video on because the others I read before I was doing videos, and I'm not one to go back and do videos for books that I read uh, previous to this. So, um, but anyway, it's it also pertains to memory, and uh, so uh, there's this memory of how memories influence our present, um, and um, and how memories, uh, how we use memories, and how we 
um, how we, you know, what we do with our memories. And so in the, in the book, I won't give it away, but memories, um, are very important to, um, at least one of the, one of the characters and what happens there is, um, you know, I thought was, was very beautiful as far as what became of those memories. Um, so I think, you know, um, I think that's, I, I wanted to, to wrap up my chat with, with this sort of last, um, um, thing from the book, because I think the la this last sentence from the book is, um, really, um, really cool. So let me just find that real quick. Cause like I said, I read this electronically, so I have to scroll to it. Uh, I don't have a fancy new Kindle that, um, I can actually get to particularly easily. Um, There we are. So what happens, um, I mean, this, this sort of ending is the boy named Crow. So it's that chorus, um, uh, for, um, for Kafka and the boy named Crow says, you better get some sleep. The boy named Crow says, when you wake up, you'll be a part of a brand new world. You finally fall asleep. And when you wake up, it's true. You are part of a brand new world. So, um, that's definitely not a spoiler. That's just a, a beautiful, um, sort of, take on, on really, um, on really Mirakami in general and, and this book in particular. So, um, that's it. I hope that you found this book some, or this chat somewhat interesting. I really love the book. So I hope I, I did it justice in this little brief chat. Um, and, um, I definitely will be, um, reading other, uh, Mirakami, the other Murakami novels uh, soon. I do have on my list to read, which I may or may not follow for the rest of the year, um, The Colorless Mr. Uh, I forget it now, but the, the latest Murakami novel that actually just came out, I think, last year. So that's coming up uh, in some future chat. Um, and, but until next time, uh, I'll catch you soon. Bye.